we're a 100% employee-owned company, and things were going very well for us. Uh, our servant leadership journey didn't begin because we had big, deep problems that forced us to change. We had great operating results. Financial results were phenomenal. In fact, they were so good, we just had lots of people retiring in their 40s and 50s, which really caused a retention problem. If you eliminate the um, early retirement, our retention rate was close to 99%. There was about 1% of the folks that actually left that were eligible for rehire, meaning the churn of around 10%, nine-ish or so percent were the people that probably just didn't fit the culture or had different reasons, maybe a shift they'd rather work or something like that. Um, we were growing pretty strongly and so a lot of things were going in the right direction. Um, we also talk a lot about, the since we're employee-owned, we talk a lot about the legacy of ownership. Um, so we always talk about leaving it better than you found it. We're all standing on someone else's shoulders. We're playing the infinite game. We're not used to short-term thinking. We try to make decisions that'll be good for people for generations. And we love that Lincoln quote, um, you can't escape the responsibilities of tomorrow by uh, evading it today. So it's really like, you gotta keep this one going really strong so it's in great shape to hand off. Because our, our goal is really, this is Dr. Adiz, he wrote a great book called The Corporate Life Cycle where he examines what that is and he compares it to the life cycle of a human being. But we try to stay up in that adolescent and prime category, which is really hard to do. It's really, really hard to do. But we think servant leadership is one way to be able to help accomplish that. So I'm gonna just quickly kind of run through our journey. So this is kind of what we did. We changed how we recruited leaders. We did a little brand discovery process a few years ago. Uh, we started company-wide leadership development and we used an engagement survey as some tools to get some good unfettered feedback. So the first thing I'd like to share with you is uh, how we changed the, the way we recruited leaders. So uh, although we like to promote from within and develop leaders from within, that early retirement issue and growth in the business made it necessary to recruit um, from the outside. But to try to preserve the culture uh, through that change, we really ramped up how we assess leaders for some servant leadership uh, attributes and designed an onboarding process to really reinforce the core values and the culture and the servant leadership. Um, so one of the ways somebody was asking about, you know, how do you really do this stuff? So it, it was very, very time consuming. Um, we bring leaders in, if they had a substantial role and they were gonna be running uh, uh, plants or major departments uh, or anything in the C-suite, so to speak, they would have to meet with 50 of our employee owners. Um, we'd hit, see how they reacted with all of them. Uh, we'd screen the heck out of them. We'd do multiple panel interviews. Sometimes they'd have to talk to 20 people in a day and be in rooms with six to eight people at a time. We did uh, IQ tests, personality, abstract reasoning tests, did role playing bring them in and actually see how they'd work with teams. Uh, day in the lives, we give them real problems and, and say, here's the group you're gonna be working with, show us how you'd lead them. Um, we send them to a behavior psychologist, a person that's gotten to know us since 2009, so they really know our, our culture and our servant leadership um, goals. So they evaluate them against that, a pretty deep dive, it's pretty, uh, pretty intense. Um, so we're screening for the fit for the role, fit for the culture, aptitude, experience, the servant leadership, that kind of thing, which fits um, Patrick Linsconi's uh, book that he wrote. It was really an interesting thing, and I, I know in the nuts and bolts it was talked about, and um, the two speakers prior to me also talked about it, but we're, you're really looking for the humble, hungry, and smart, because it's one of those things, without one of those, they can really hurt you as a leader. So we, we try to do our best to screen for that. And we have a great example that started our uh, employee ownership journey 40 years ago. So this year we're actually celebrating our 125th anniversary as a business and our 40th as an employee owned company. And this is Pete Jorgson who's the man that started it. He's still with us at 93, still on our board of directors, still as uh, bright and articulate as uh, he was in his 40s just an amazing person.